Here are all the parts and supplies that I used to change the oil on my Kia Sorento 2014 SXL. It has the 3.3 liter engine in it, the six cylinder, and uh, it's going to require uh, 6.02 liter, uh, sorry, 6.02 US quarts of oil or in metric 5.7 liters of oil. They spec 5W30, so that's what I'm going to be using. And I will be using full synthetic as well. I will also be using an OEM filter for this. Uh, and though this is Hyundai, Hyundai and Kia are, are, have merged into one company. So this is definitely OEM for that uh, vehicle. I'll show you the, the part number here. Let me zoom it in. Okay, and there we are, and it's 236320-3CAA0, and I'll put the uh, link to this on Amazon in the video description. And uh, they usually go for around 10 bucks. Uh, if you buy more, you get a, 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 a bigger discount. Um, here's the filter itself. That's what it looks like, and it's the cartridge filter. And uh, it comes with a, a large O-ring and a crush bearing, uh, sorry, a crush uh, uh, washer for the uh, drain plug so it looks like a nice filter uh, i was looking at walmart at the fram oil filter and it is the model number ch10855 which they spec for the same vehicle it looks identical it really does has the same o-ring crush uh, the crush washer and the uh, company that makes the filter is the exact same company that fram filter is made in korea and i'm telling you all that because if you want to go cheaper i think the fram filter is the same filter anyway and uh, i believe they're going for about eight dollars on uh, amazon i'll post a link to that as well i like to go with oem because i my vehicle's still under warranty and i want to make sure that i don't have any issues with warranty because of using the wrong parts now uh, you're also going to need a drain pan of course it's got to be able to hold at least six quarts i would say an eight quart pan would be uh, you know more than uh, enough you're going to need a uh, a socket a 27 27 millimeter socket and a 17 millimeter socket you're going to use the 27 millimeter socket to take the cap off the oil filter uh, the 17 is for the drain plug you will also need a uh, uh, torque wrench to do this correctly uh, i don't like to put anything on my car that isn't properly torqued and uh, you know i don't have to worry about it if i torque it correctly to the right amounts and i have the values that you need to uh, torque on the uh, filter cap and the actual drain plug so hey uh, i'm going to use it now you it's up to you whether you use it or not but i strongly recommend it you don't want to a strip these things and b put them on too loosely and have them come off uh, either way that's a catastrophic uh, event so uh, we'll go from there the other thing you're going to need is a set of ramps to lift the front of your car up so you can get underneath and uh, uh, pull the drain plug off. All right, here we are on the uh, Kia Sorento, the uh, uh, SXL, and we are on the driver's side looking down at where the brake, uh, emergency brake foot pedal is, which is right there. And right beside that, you'll see the hood release lever, which you'll have to pull on in order to uh, release the hood and get into the engine compartment. So I'm going to do that next. Now we're looking at the front uh, grill of the Kia and uh, the hood has been released by the uh, release lever but you see that the secondary lock is still engaged so you can't open it all the way. Now if you look at the sticker or the emblem on front of the, the uh, uh, grill follow the eye up up straight up to it and you'll see that there's a little uh, latch here to release the, the hood so all you do is just put your hand in there lift the uh, lever up like that and raise the hood and uh, that's it you've got the hood open we're looking inside the engine compartment right now and there's two components we need to take well the filler cap will be the first thing so we'll take that filler cap off just twist it uh, counterclockwise there we go off it goes then we've got to remove this uh, engine cover and it's just friction fitted on with four rubber mounts underneath so all you need to do is just lift it just wiggle it like that and it just pops off and uh, remove it and you see right here one two three four posts and that's where it goes back in uh, it's pretty easy to put back in anyway just like it's easy to take off <clears throat> and here we have the oil filler Filter, sorry, the oil filter cap. I don't know if you can see it in this video, but uh, here, all right. And the reason that's why we're taking we're taking the uh, actual cover off the engine so that we can look at at the uh, oil filter, which is right there. That's the oil filter uh, cap right there, and the oil filler is right there. 
Um, but we're not touching that yet. Next, we're going to go underneath and uh, underneath the car, uh, you know, put it up on the ramps, go underneath the car and actually uh, drain the oil from the engine. And then we'll come back for the oil filter. Okay, we're underneath the car now and uh, we're looking towards the passenger's front wheel, passenger side front wheel. And here you'll notice the uh, exhaust system. And if you re recently, recently driven the car, watch out for this part of the car because it's going to be really hot. The exhaust system gets really, really warm. Uh, also, the you know any other metal part of the engine will be very hot. As well, the oil will be too. Now, the drain plug is right here at the back of the uh, actual uh, oil pan. And uh, we just need to twist it off using a 17 millimeter uh, wrench and a... Uh, uh, socket driver or a socket wrench. So I'm going to do that right now. All right. So I just broke the uh, seal there, and this should come out fairly easy. Now, there's also a crush washer on here that you get a new one with every single oil filter you have. So make sure when you take this nut, the uh, drain plug off, that you actually uh, replace the crush washer with a new one. Uh, why not? They gave you a new one with every filter. Okay, now it's just about ready to come off. Make sure you got your pan underneath the bolt and also towards the back of the car because it will be coming out at an angle in that direction. Here we go. All right, and just let it drain. Now I'm going to let this drain and uh, basically go up uh, up top of the engine and now uh, replace the filter and uh, take my little uh, drain bolt with me so I can uh, replace the crush washer. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, remove the oil filter cap. Uh, currently the uh, uh, drain plug is also off the engine, so the oil is still draining into the pan. And because uh, I wanted to see if there's any pressure here or anything or any oil still left in here, I want it to drain out. So let's uh, take the uh, cap off here. And this is my 27 millimeter socket. There we go. <clears throat> we just lift off the cap. And there's a little bit of oil in the cap. I'll let that drain out. And there's our oil filter. So I'm just going to pull the cap off. I'm going to clean the inside of the cap out and uh, the threads. And this O-ring needs to be replaced with a new one that comes with the uh, oil filter as well. So we'll just put that aside for now. But that's what I'm going to do with that. And I'll show you. Do, uh, I'll show you how to replace the O-ring. It's no big deal. Now the oil filter has a little stud on the bottom of it. So don't twist it left to right because you might break that stud off in the actual socket that it's in. So you don't want to do that. You want to wiggle it back and forth and lift at the same time. And just a, a slight wiggle, not big, crazy, anything. You know, just wiggle it out of there. There we go. And off it goes. Okay. And there's the stud I was talking about. So if you were to twist that uh, oil filter from left to right, you snap that off right in that hole and then you've got another big problem. Okay. So... There's the oil filter out. I'll take that out. And uh, now we'll replace it with a new one. It goes straight back in the way it came out. Again, you got that little stud on there. And you'll see the hole in the bottom of the uh, uh, filter case. And just match it up with that. And if you just, there, see? You can feel it drop in. It'll be high, 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 and then boom, drops in. So once it drops in, wiggle it down. Push it down. Don't twist it. Just push it down and you know wiggle it right down. And then the next thing to do is we're going to change the uh, actual O-ring on this cap. And that's real easy. If you can get it with your fingernail, get it with your fingernail. If you can't, like I can because I just cut my fingernails, I'm going to use uh, my screwdriver, flathead. And I'm trying not to uh, mark anything here like the, uh, you know, the plastic, the, uh, I'm not all that concerned about the O-ring, really. Off it goes. All right, so there's the channel for the O-ring. 
You can see it, it's just one flat channel all the way around. Uh, I guess you could put it on the top uh, near the groove, so don't do that. And don't put it any higher either. It goes right into this channel, right there. That's the channel, okay? So just know where you got it out from and uh, replace it. So I'll put the new one back on there and it just slips around like that. And make sure that it's in all the way around on that channel, and mine is. And uh, it's lubricated from the oil that was there. You can use some new fresh oil if you wish. Uh, and then uh, put the cap back on. This oil is pretty good. So I'm going to put this cap back on after I put a little bit of fresh oil on there. Okay. I put the fresh oil in there on the uh, actual O-ring. And if you look at the cap, there's a little insert that goes in the top of the actual oil filter. So you'll have to go get past that by pushing down on it and twisting. There we go. Now I'm going to turn it around backwards because I like to not cross thread this. This is plastic. It's easily broken. So I'm going to turn it backwards here like this or counterclockwise. There. Once you hear that, it's ready to go the other way. All right. So I'm going to hand tighten it down. And then I'm going to use my uh, torque wrench to torque it down to 25.8 foot pounds. So I'll get my torque wrench out and do that next. All right, got the, my torque wrench set up right. And now it's just a matter of just torquing that down. Okay, so now we're getting near the point where it's going to uh, click. So this is a click type uh, of torque wrench, so Okay, that's 25.8 right there. Don't go any further. It's plastic. You don't want to over torque it. That's for sure. So now we've got the cap back on. I, I'm going to clean some of that off with a rag and then we're going to go back underneath, put the uh, uh, drain plug back in and then fill the crankcase full of oil. Okay, I just wanted to show you that changing the crush washer is a real simple procedure here. You just pull it off the uh, drain plug, okay, and replace it with a new one. That's it. And put it back on the car at the proper torque. And I'll tell you what that is when I'm underneath the uh, engine putting it back in. Now we're underneath the car. I've got my new crush washer on the uh, drain bolt, as you can see. And I'm going to put it in right back into the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, oil pan to seal that up. So, just twist it on there. Use my rag, clean a little excess oil around there. There we go. And twist it on. Again, watch out if you've been driving the car, the exhaust system's hot. Everything's hot, so mine's not too hot. It's, it's bearable. Okay, so I've got it hand tightened down to uh, basically to the bottom of, that I can get it to with my hand. And next I'm going to put my torque wrench on here and torque that 17 inch, sorry, 17 millimeter bolt down to 32.5 foot pounds. So that's the torque for that nut, 32.5 foot pounds. Okay, that's where I'm clicking. So there it's 32.5, don't go any harder. Okay, now we're done underneath the car and we're going to put, uh, refill the crankcase full of oil. Okay, so next we're gonna fill the engine full of oil. Uh, I like cleaning around the spout uh, as well, get it nice and clean before I put the uh, actual uh, funnel in there. But uh, this is pretty basic. Notice that I haven't put the cover on the engine yet because I like the space here to uh, actually hold the bottle and, and, and tip it in. And I'll show you what I mean uh, in a second. So let's get our oil in there. And I know I'm going to be in the shot, but 
not much I can do to avoid that. I like laying it sideways like this when I'm uh, uh, pouring it. Um, I find, find that it pours much nicer that way uh, without, uh, you know, any uh, herky-jerky kind of pouring to it. It's nice and smooth. And if you watch, you'll see. I don't know if you can see it. You can't see it. Here. There we go. Maybe. No. There we go. So yeah, pouring it sideways like this with the bottle horizontally aligned um, works just way better. For me anyways. There we go. And that's a full bottle in there. I'm going to check the dipstick here in a second. Let that rest in there. See if I can get it to rest. There we go. All right. Again, not having the engine uh, cover on makes this easier too because you don't have to worry about getting around it for the dipstick too. Okay, it's showing at the low line. Uh, I know this takes six quarts and uh, I'm actually at an angle here because the car is up on the ramp still. So I'm going to take it down from the ramps to fill the rest of the oil in. And uh, I suggest you do too because it's much nicer to get it the oil level right on a level surface. I'm going to pour two more pints of liquid gold in here, oil, and uh, actually uh, check the dipstick after each pint. Uh, that should give me six quarts in total. And then I'll check, uh, see if we're exactly where we should be. Uh, by the way, it is now level on the ground. All right, one pint. Check the dipstick. See where we're at. Give it a little longer to get there. Okay. The next bite should put it as red right at full. And yes, we're at full. Okay, so next thing you need to do is put the engine uh, cover on or dressing and uh, replace the, the filler cap. And then you're done. So we'll just do that quickly. Put the cap on first. Don't want any dirt falling in there. You hear it click. Once it clicks, you're there. There we go. And this just align it with that cap and you should be pretty well out bang on 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 the posts if you're not you'll know it but when you're on it just press down on it on the cap on the uh, cover and uh, you should be fine so that's it we are now done changing the oil on this Kia Sorento 2014 SXL this is a 3.3 liter six cylinder engine So here's how you reset your uh, maintenance interval counter or timer on the Kia Sorento 2014. This is the model SXL. So hit your start button once and then hit it twice. And that gets you into the main uh, menu on the speedometer. And now we got to go over to the actual um, 
uh, maintenance counter so just hit your menu button these two buttons are what we're going to be dealing with this is what I call a menu button and a down arrow button so we're going to hit the menu button once twice that gets us to the compass and the third time gets you to the service interval now I just recently reset it to 5,000 miles the service interval in this car is actually 7,500 miles so uh, if you want to set it to 7,500 miles, I'll show you how to do that later. But if this is set to something other than 5,000, like, uh, you know, let's say 3,000 or, or you're down to one mile and you need to reset it because you just changed your oil, just hold down your uh, down arrow button for two seconds and it'll reset. Now, mine's already reset, so I can't really reset it again unless I go for a drive. But it's, I just changed the oil, so just hold it down the arrow button for two seconds. That will reset your service interval timer or counter. Hit your menu button one more time and I'll show you how to uh, change the actual value here. Again, like I said, I like it. Uh, I like changing my oil every, every 5,000 even though Kia uh, recommends every 7,500 miles. So there we go to the user settings by hitting the menu button one more time. And here we're going to hit the down arrow button to get into the settings. Alright, and then we're in the settings menu and here we're going to hit the down arrow button four times. All right, and there we are four times and we're at the service interval uh, menu or sub menu and here, here we're going to hit the menu button one more time and we're into the service interval settings now here you can have the option to uh, switch it off or on or set it to whatever you'd like if you switch it to off it will reset all these values and you'll have to redo all the values so i'll show you that just down arrow to the off button hit the menu button here to select it and now it's off. Now if we get out of this menu by hitting the uh, uh, select button, actually the uh, down arrow button to go back and then the down arrow button again to exit and the menu button to get out, you'll see that if we go to the service in uh, option here, it's off and you can't do anything with it. Okay, it's already off. So. Um, I don't know why you'd want that setting, but anyway, if, there it is. Uh, let's go back to the uh, service menu again by hitting the menu button one more time. We're in the user settings now. So then we go uh, to the down arrow button here to get into the settings. Down arrow button four times. One, two, three, four. The service interval, I'm going to hit the menu button here. And then we're going to go down two times to the on button or the on menu. And there it is. There's your settings. And here you have to set your digits. So in order to do that, you just hit your down arrow button to move down to the digits. And we're in the hundred thousands there. So we want to go into the, uh, sorry, the, the uh, tens of thousands. We want to go into the uh, thousands area, which is right there. And here we're going to hit the menu button to change the value from one, two, three, four, and five. You can set it whatever you'd like to. Uh, 7,500 is not an issue. Uh, just hit it two more times and then hit the down arrow button to go to the next digit and then switch that digit to five by hitting the menu button. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it on 5,000. Then we're going to go to the months settings. There's a tenth uh, setting on that months. I'm going to go to the, to, the, to the single digits or the ones and I'm going to set that to six months. Though I'm not really all that concerned about time. I'm more concerned about mileage. And here we're done with that. So if you hit the down arrow button one more time, you go back to the back option and then you hit the menu button again. Then you go down arrow again to the exit. Then you're in the user settings. And here you just switch to hit the menu button one more time and you're back to the normal telemetry that you see on your uh, speedometer uh, every day. Uh, your mileage, your uh, time, your, you know, basically all the telemetry that's normal to, that, to this uh, uh, screen. So that's how you reset or change the values on your maintenance interval counter or timer on the Kia Sorento 2014 uh, SXL. Here's my comparison between the Fram Extra Guard CH10855 and the Hyundai 26320. 3C AA0 filter. These are both oil filters that fit the Kia Sorento uh, 2014 with the 3.3 liter engine six cylinder. So, boxes are, very, are the exact same size, no big deal there. But uh, if we go to the next picture, you'll see that 
I, I took the uh, filter out of the box in, in uh, Walmart because I was really curious to see what it looked like. And it's, it looks identical to the uh, actual Hyundai filter. And then the kickers here on the very top of the filter is that they're both made by the same company. The printing's the same. Everything's the same. Uh, they're both made in Korea. This one's made in Korea. It's made by Mahale or Ma Ma Mali and Mali here. Same thing. The only difference between the two on the top is the actual printing of the part number for the Hyundai filter on the side. So the Fram filter looks exact, exactly the same as the uh, Kia Hyundai filter. So I know there's not a, love out, not a lot of love out there for Fram filters, but in this case, it's not really a Fram filter. It looks like Fram is buying them from the exact same people that uh, Hyundai is buying them from. Uh, and the price is cheaper on the Fram side. So if you're not concerned about warranty and using OEM parts, I think you still are using an OEM part, but at least in, uh, in, the, in my case, I can still claim to be using an OEM part if I buy this part number. Of course, I'm gonna pay more for that. And once my warranty period is expired, I will probably go to this uh, filter because it is exactly the same from what I can see. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button right down here. And, uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.